Hello, and in this video, I want to introduce the concept of duress. So what is duress? Duress is actual violence or threatened violence, which is used to make a party enter into a contract. Now, the courts are really keen to like challenge this kind of violent pressure. And the reason being because it contradicts a central principle on which contract law is built, which is um, the freedom to enter into a contract of your choice because you'll be pressured in a, a illegitimate way. So um, juris was uh, developed by the common law and it's still a common law concept and it's still used there but it's very narrow and it's very specific to threatened or actual violence and so sometimes you have pressure which is unreasonable but it's not um, you know, violence, so it can't count as duress. And so the courts of equity developed the doctrine of undue influence, and that I'll be looking at in my other videos. So that's the relationship between duress and undue influence. Now, regardless of whether it's duress or undue influence, if it is successfully established, that the contract is made void and is put aside. Now, this is crucial because think about it, courts don't want to do this because of sanctity of contract. But they're forced to do this um, because they feel that it's illegitimate pressure and it's wrong. So traditionally, it was only about um, actual violence. But over time, it's developed to uh, incorporate threats of violence if it's seen to, um, you know, sort of rule out the amount of consent somebody has. So I'm going to show this by talking about two cases. The first is Barton and Armstrong. So there's lots of facts in this case, but essentially it boils down to one party ended up having to buy shares at a ridiculously high price because um, he was sent death threats. Now, this contract to selling these shares at the ridiculously high price was put aside. It was made void. Why? Because death threats is, you know, a threat of uh, actual violence and, you know, it's um, it's duress. And in the second case is coming and ints. Basically, it was a private mental um, asylum inmate. Now, they were put under so much pressure by saying that they would not have their committal order, so this uh, legal court order, removed if they didn't assign their property away. But um, the court said that actually they didn't have a choice um, and it was threatened violence by keeping them into these confined spaces. It's torture, it was duress. Now, threats to carry out lawful actions, however, they can't count as jurors. They have to be unlawful, like, you know, giving away the property or shares. Are, you know, th there has to be something unlawful about the threat that's made. Because in Williams and Bailey, basically what happened, it was... Um, it was to do with a son who had forged the father's signature and then the bank said something along the lines that now you have to enter um, into a contract or we're going to bring a court proceeding against your son who had forged the signature. That cannot be duress because that's illegal to forge and so that's a completely different um, case and it's a legitimate claim, you know, a, a legal claim like that. Now... So we established that it has to be unlawful pressure, but there's a further modification. The unlawful pressure uh, has to be one which impairs free will. So in R and Attorney General for England and Wales, I think what happened in this case, that, um, the defendant was f uh, forced the claimant to sign a document, and it was he was told that either he leaves his job or he signs a contract. Now, this could not be established as duress, as it wasn't unlawful pressure. He had a choice. He could leave the job. And also, so I think a further caveat to this case is, is it seems a bit harsh, but I think when you're talking about employment, there's a lot of legislation governing it. So it's not so much an issue of pure contract law. It's also to do with employment law and other things. So the other second thing is like duress can be any type of threat. So we were talking about threats to the person. Originally, you weren't allowed to have threats to goods because how can you have threats to property count as duress? So in Skate and Beale, a landlord threatened to take the tenant's possession and sell them if they did not enter the new contract. Um, but they said that the, the contract could not be set aside because duress can't apply to goods. But, you know, this was changed. Now you can claim um, compensation for... Um, duress to goods so in Maskell and Horner similarly a threat against goods allowed made the courts allowed for um, money to be recompensated
Now, overall, duress is really difficult to find in modern times because I don't think that many people actually use like violence or um, threaten violence to make people enter into contracts because also it's very much connected with the criminal side of the legal system. What is more significant is undue influence because um, to a certain extent it's much easier to prove. And we'll talk about that in my next video. Thank you for watching.